No, your eyes do not deceive you. I said I'm bringing a 2v2 tier list this Friday. It is Friday. Here is your tier list. Poppin' Often is not a liar. He may be a lot of other things, but a liar, he is not. Now, let me set up some ground rules, even though you might not care about the rules. The rules are in place so everybody knows what page we are on when we are talking about these characters and placing these characters. Rule number one. I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to say this in almost every single tier list that I make. This is not a top 1% pro player. I'm in a tournament. I'm best player in the world tier list. It's not for that. Should you need any of those, you obviously don't need a tier list. Rule number two, we're going to be focusing on the ease of use of the character in a 2v2 scenario. Rule number three, we're focusing on the ease of execution of that character in a 2v2 setting. Rule number four, this is not a combo tier list. We're not looking at the best two characters to put together. However, rank should be coming soon. Don't quote me, but they were talking about it on Twitter. It might be dropping next patch, especially because they're focusing more on balance changes. If you want to see an updated tier list, not only for 1v1s, but 2v2s and for combos, let me know down in the comments below and I will see about making those once ranked drops. And of course, the most important rule, number five, don't forget to comment because you most likely are not going to agree with anything I say in this list. As you know, I love reading all your comments and I love responding to the comments. But enough of that mushy mushy, gushy gushy. First up we have is Arya. Now I'm not going to be going in depth about the characters because we did that in the last tier list. This is more going to just be placing them. Arya is one of those characters that have a different play style when they play in a 1v1 or a 2v2. They are not the same character. A 1v1 Arya is always going to be different from a 2v2 Arya. There's a lot of issues to Arya and why she's not that great in a 2v2 setting. Her range is very short. Whenever she goes in, she can get locked up and she can explode. She's very light, so if she does get locked up, she's most likely KO'd. But the main thing is a lot of Arya's gameplay is about setup. She needs to put someone in the right spot to then execute her combos. If she can't do that, then she's not going to be that great. The fact that 2v2 is a very chaotic mode, and not only can you not understand what your teammate's going to do sometimes, but you definitely can't predict the enemy, this is what makes her a problem. If you decide to play Arya in a 2v2 setting and you're not a one trick, good luck. All I'm going to say to you, you are most likely going to take that L if you play Arya in a 2v2 scenario. Unfortunately, that's just how it works with this character. She's better designed for a 1v1 than a 2v2. The next character that we have is the Banana Guard. This is one of those characters that like you need to pay attention to 24-7. If you, if you blink and you miss this character for like a second or a half a second, you're getting launched to like two maps over. This character's KO potential is so insane, even after his nerf, there's gonna be two ways to play this character. You can just run around and just spam, and it'll hit because it's a 2v2, especially if there's no platforms, or you can just wait for the KO opportunity and just pop somebody when they get to that threshold. Very easy to execute character in a 2v2, and it's really not that much different from their play style in a 1v1 scenario easily a KO machine. If you pick this character, you are most likely going to be winning most of your games. It doesn't matter if you're the spammy version or the weight version, you are going to get some free ring outs. The next character that we have is Batman. So Batman's interesting. Batman's kind of along the same spectrum as Arya when it comes to different in a 1v1 scenario than a 2v2 scenario. For the most part, if Batman has the proper character to complement him, he starts to be a better character, but should the character not complement him that well, he's going to be rough. Batman likes characters that are very close range just like he is. He wants to find another kind of button mash type of character. A character that can press the buttons and they'll just get combos automatically. That's how Batman works and that's what type of teammate he wants to have. Then he can put them in a blender and they're just, just getting chopped up and exploded. That's what Batman wants. In this case, we're going to put him in partner in crime. No pun intended, but partner in crime because he needs to have the right character to compliment him. Should he not have that character, you are most likely not going to win your match. You are going to need something that works well with Batman. The next character that we have is Black Adam. I almost said Adam West. I don't, I don't know. The next character that we have is Black Adam. Man, Black Adam is very, very strong in twos. This character is disgusting. One of the main reasons is because he doesn't really have cooldowns. If, he, if they put cooldowns on this character, he'd be a lot more tame. But the fact that he doesn't have cooldowns means that it's very easy for him to do what he wants to do. One of the main abilities that he does in, or one of the two main abilities that he does in a 2v2 is the one where he slams the ground and it ruptures underneath the enemy's feet or the uh, lightning ball that he pops out and it chains. Not only does it chain from his teammate, meaning he doesn't even need to hit the enemy and it will hit the enemy, but on top of that, it can go through projectiles and objects. So let's say Bugs Bunny drops the safe and Bugs is like, I'm about to smack this safe. Adam's gonna be like, good luck. Electrocute the safe, it electrocutes Bugs Bunny, and then electrocutes Bugs Bunny's partner, and then your partner goes in and starts clapping cheeks. It's rough. Adam can easily solo carry a game. I mean, this man's just saying, hold my poodle, and that's all he's gonna do. He's gonna carry the game for you as long as you just don't die. And that's only two of his moves. This man has a shield that will block projectiles. I mean, this dude has a lot going for him. The next character that we have is Bugs Bunny. Now, Bugs Bunny is interesting. 
Bugs Bunny is one of those characters that are the same in a 1v1 scenario as a 2v2 scenario. You pretty much will do the exact same things. Yes, there's some one trick main combos that you can't really pull off in a 2v2 scenario, but should you not be a one trick, which is what this video is for, you're gonna do the same exact thing most likely. Bugs Bunny is great because he has so much presence. He has presence with the safe, he has presence with the rocket. He can also burrow into the map. The cool thing about Bugs Bunny as well is that his teammates can use all of his stuff. His teammates can hit the safe, his teammates can ride the rocket, his teammates can use the burrow, whether to, whether to travel themselves or put something in it. He is a character that can backpack someone should they not be that great at the game. Definitely a hold my poodle type character behind Black Adam because he takes a little bit more work than Black Adam. Black Adam would just throw some stuff. Bugs Bunny has cooldowns, so you can't really willy nilly throw everything. Finn doesn't really play too differently from the 1v1 scenario than the 2v2 scenario. However, there are a few differences. I also think that one comment or maybe two, I think it might have been one, might have been confused on what I said about Finn when I said that he is a combo character. When I was talking about Finn, I said he has strings. If you're not a fighting game player, you might not know what they are, so let me explain. Strings are moves put together to basically form a string, right? If I do this move into this move into that move, it's a string. However, the opponent can get out of it whether I mess up, they can get out of it if they dodge, they can get out of it if they DI. However, a true combo, which is what I was talking about with Harley, is that you can press buttons and they will always work. It will lead into combos and it cannot be dropped. Now, a lot of Finn's combos do need to be set up in a way then the character needs to be put in a specific way to do something specific. He's kind of an Arya shoes where it's like you need to have the enemy in the spot in order for all of your stuff to chain reaction and work. However, he's better than Arya in the sense of it's easier to do what he wants to do even if you don't really pull the entire combo together. You can still kind of let it rip by pressing certain buttons. On top of that, Finn's very supportive as well. He can give his team speed boost. He can also give them armor boost. Due to him needing setup, he's not really a KO machine like the banana guard where he can just pop a KO no matter the circumstance, but he's also not in a good luck category. I'm gonna put him in front of Batman with the partner in crime. Should you have a character that can complement Finn, he's actually really good in 2v2s, but should you not and you have to do all the work yourself, you might find yourself struggling to win the match. The next character that we have is Garnett. Garnett's one of those characters that have a lot less going for her than they do going for her. One of the main things is that her character model is huge. The other thing is that her range is relatively short and her moves are very straightforward. You don't really need to be a rocket scientist to understand how she works once you see her do a couple of moves. And she also has cooldowns which limits her kit. Should you play like a god, I think Garnett could definitely be in the KO machine area, but this tier list is not for players who play like gods, this tier list is for everybody else. In my opinion, it's more of a good luck if you pick her. We're gonna put her in front of Arya though, because she's easier to play than Arya. The fact that her model is big and she's very straightforward as a character, if you're gonna play Garnett in 2v2s and want to win way more than you lose, you're gonna need to play better than average or your teammate's gonna need to play better than average. Otherwise, you're probably not gonna win many matches. The next character that we have is Gizmo. Gizmo has a lot of presence and it's already very hard to hit Gizmo because he's very small. So him being small, being able to run around and do everything, he has very large hitboxes too for being his size. On top of that, he has the ability to attach to his teammate and just run around shooting arrows. His cooldowns are very low. This character is a menace in 1v1 and he can straight up carry a match in 2v2s easily. It's very easy to carry with Gizmo. The fact that his kit is already so hectic, adding on the fact that 2v2 is hectic as well, you'll carry games like nothing. Next character we have up is Harley Quinn. Now Harley Quinn is one of those characters that are different in 1v1 and different in 2v2. Although Harley Quinn is a very easy character to play and a lot of her combos are true, in a 2v2 scenario, your teammate can knock her out of doing that, which means she's very combo focused in an area where it's more about hit and run tactics. She also doesn't really provide a lot in her kit to help support a 2v2. In my opinion, she's right next to Batman. The reason why she's lower than Batman is because Batman is heavier and I also feel Batman has better hitboxes and better options. Harley Quinn is really just more focused on that, that combo game. She's more focused on that single target game. Should you have the right character to compliment you, like I said before, in Batman's case, you need another button masher. Should you have another button masher, you're gonna start blending up people. They can't move, they're gonna be stun locked and your teammate's gonna have to try to come in and help. Should they also be stun locked, then, you know, they just lose the match. However, if you don't have that complimentary character, then you're most likely not gonna win as much with Harley Quinn in a 2v2 setting. Next character that we have is the Iron Giant. The Iron Giant is a great character. It's, it's nice that he's back. Let me know in the comments below, are y'all happy? Are y'all happy that Iron Giant is back in the game? Iron Giant has really big hitboxes, which is awesome. He's very hard to KO because he's so big. Um, that's one of the downsides you would think to Iron Giant, but the fact that he's big actually makes it easier for him because, again, he has really massive hitboxes. It's also very easy to KO people at the top of the blast zone because he's already so tall. You just have to lift the character to that height, and there you go. 
in that regard, he is a KO machine, no pun intended. He is a KO machine, and if you don't even know what you're doing, you most likely can set up some KOs. I've had plenty of Iron Giants on my team and that I've went against who had accidental KOs. You might think like, Poppin, how in the world is someone gonna accidentally KO someone? Bro, I'm... When you see it, you'll understand what I mean. It's the funniest thing. Once you play him for a few matches and really understand his kit though, he then becomes a real KO machine. And the plus side is most of the time he's not gonna die on you because he's so heavy. The next character that we have is Jake. Jake is in the middle of a KO machine as well as partner in crime. The reason why I say this is because Jake has a few KO options, but they're not so straightforward where they, he can just let it rip like the banana guard. The banana guard can legit, Press a button, you're knocked out. Jake can't really spam his KO options and it's easily dodgeable, but should he hit you, you're getting skyrocketed. Because there's more emphasis on the Jake player and the situation in the game, but we're gonna put him behind Finn. The reason why we're putting him behind Finn is because Finn really doesn't need a lot of work to make work, you just press buttons. When it comes to Jake, you he's weird. He's funky and you are gonna get, need to get used to him. And no, a KO option is not eating someone and falling off the map. Bro, the amount of Jake players that I see try to do that cheese move like it's in Smash Brothers with Kirby. What is wrong with y'all? Don't do that. In Jake's case, should you have the right complimentary character, Jake will work wonders. However, should you not, you're gonna need to bust your butt to carry a match or your teammates gonna need to bust their butt to carry a match. When it comes down to Jake, you're most likely gonna need a complimentary character to make him work. He likes characters that aren't really button mashy like Harley Quinn and Batman. It's more of the characters that like to space as well or to just have a straight up beef monster tank in front of them. The next character that we have is Jason. Boy, Jason. Jason, Jason's rough in both 1v1s and 2v2s. So you're really gonna have to main this character to make him work. The issue with Jason is that a lot of his stuff is dodgeable. A lot of his stuff is missable. So the player can just have player error and he's very big. And he's not necessarily big in a way where it's like, oh my God, you're never gonna knock this guy out. He's like big in a way where it's like, it's easy to knock him out. It's very strange, but if you go against a Jason or if you play Jason, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about if you pay attention. He really needs to have a main playlist character. And because of that, we're gonna put him in good luck. We're gonna put him in front of Arya just because he is easier to play than Arya and he's heavier, but we're gonna put him behind Garnett because he's less intuitive than Garnett is. The next character up is Joker. Now Joker, is a menace in 1v1s. We already talked about this. I'm not gonna go in depth. Check out the other tier lists if you want to know more information about what I said. But in my opinion, Joker goes into that whole my poodle category. This character can carry a match. He has a lot of disjointed hitboxes, so even in 2v2, they work in his favor. A lot of his attacks are very big hitboxes, so he gets away with hitting multiple targets should they be together. He's a very good character, and once you get used to him, he can, he will carry twos like nothing. The next character that we have is LeBron James. Now with LeBron James, he did recently get nerfed too, so it makes it a little bit more rough in a 2v2 scenario. But he's one of those characters that you have to really be good. The better you are at this character, the better he is. So I'm gonna put him in skill base. If you just pick this character up, you're, you're losing your 2v2s. But the more you get better at this character, the better he is in 2v2s and the more he will climb up that ladder of good luck, partner in crime, KO machine, and hold my poodle but it really is skill-based. Next we have is Marvin. So Marvin is interesting. So right off the bat, I feel like Marvin is a partner in crime character. If he has another mage or a character with projectiles, he works wonders, but he does have a lot of high cooldowns and he has to make sure that they all function properly at the right times. For the simple fact that you cannot guarantee you'll get a teammate with projectiles, we're gonna put him in good luck. However, we're gonna put him in front of Garnett because he is more or less teetering in the partner in crime. Should he get a good partner, he's up there. However, should you not get a good partner, he's down there. It, it definitely changes in that regard. Should there be a spot between both of these, he would go there, but there's not. So, you know, he's teetering between the two. The next character that we have is Morty. Easily, Morty is in the whole My Poodle section like crazy. This dude has a lot of range, a lot of AOE abilities. He's small, so it's hard to hit. He's a bruiser, so he's able, and we're actually gonna put him in front of Gizmo because he's easier to play in Gizmo. Because a lot of his abilities are more effective, Gizmo requires some setup for a lot of his stuff. He doesn't need to do it, but he does need setup. Whereas Morty can just let his stuff rip and it works. Morty has a lot of options. He's very good at spacing. Um, the character can easily solo carry a game like nothing. Next character that we have is Rain Dog. Rain Dog is interesting. I Like I said before, I used to main Rain Dog before the shutdown, and then when it came back, I main Rain Dog for a little bit. Um, Rain Dog in a 2v2 setting is strange. The thing is, he's very supportive, which is not bad, but you're definitely gonna need, he's in Marvin's, he's in Marvin's category, really. Like, we're gonna put him behind, no, we're gonna put him in front of Marvin, actually.
We're going to put him in front of Marvin just because of the fact that he's easier to play than Marvin. But again, Rain Dog requires a complementary character. Should they have a complementary character, the Rain Dog still needs to know how to play. It's not as simple as just spamming an ability over and over and over again. You're effectively going to leave your teammate to 2v1. He's not that impactful. You are going to need to know how to play Rain Dog. And then when you learn how to play Rain Dog, he's going to be in the partner in crime category. And then once you do learn how to play Rain Dog, you're still going to need a complimentary character. So unless you're a Rain Dog one trick player, he's going to be in the good luck category to where you're most likely not going to win matches unless you sign that contract to be a one trick. Next we have is Rick. As I always say, I love Rick, dude. Um, Rick is just like LeBron, but we're going to put him behind LeBron. He's one of those characters where it's like it's skill based. The better you get at Rick, the higher in tier he climbs. If you are an amazing Rick, you will be in the hold my poodle category easily. But if you're not, you're going to be in the good luck category. It really just depends on how good you are at Rick for him to be placed in one of these 2v2 categories. The next character that we have is Shaggy. I mean, do we really need to talk about this one? If we know that whether it's in a 1v1 or a 2v2 scenario, the character does the exact same thing every match, easily KO machine. All you got to do is set him up and he'll knock him down. We're actually going to put Shaggy in uh, in front of the Iron Giant. The reason we're going to put him in front of Iron Giant is because Shaggy has a lot more options to KO without actually having to put together combos or anything like that. But he's not going to go in front of the Banana Guard because the Banana Guard, literally almost every move is a KO move. Next, we have Steven Universe. Steven Universe is interesting. Um, we're going to put him in Hold My Poodle. The character is very, very, very good. Very solid. He's one of those characters that will carry if you understand the fundamentals of the game. And by that, I mean, we're actually going to put him in front of Gizmo. Basically, putting down shields helps your teammate space indirectly. The ability to have a tether between you and your teammate also helps. The ability to shield your teammate helps. The ability to really, like all of his stuff really is team focused. And he's like the poster child for like a team 2v2 type character. Without a doubt, Steven can carry a match like nothing. The next character that we have is Stripe. So Stripe is rough. Stripe is rough to place. Um, Stripe is really rough to place, actually. Let's put him with Jake. Um, he has a lot more options. These two are more of combo focus. However, he has a lot more options when it comes to using projectiles and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's a little bit harder to use than Jake. Jake's just weird and funky. But once you get used to Jake, he's not that hard. Stripe, you're still going to need to learn how to manage certain things and use certain things properly in order to really make the most out of it in a 2v2 scenario. And then, of course, the reason why these two are back here and not in the front, considering, is because they don't have a lot of options when it comes to projectiles and stuff. Yes, they have a few, but their character is more of a solo base. Like, they set themselves up for things, not their teammates. The next character that we have is Superman. Now, Superman's interesting. Um... This one's rough. There's two types of Supermans. There's a Superman that actually understands how to be a KO machine, and then there's a Superman that's like average. But if you understand how to be a KO machine, you main Superman or you are not an average Superman player. So we're not going to use that. We're going to just say he is a... This is hard. Oh, this one's really difficult. I don't really want to place this one. This can go two ways. Put him in good luck. Call it a day. Which is just, I feel like, is so inaccurate. We're going to put him in skill base. He's going to be in the front, though, because he's not hard to play. But he's one of those characters that rewards you for understanding the fundamentals. And after you learn the fundamentals, he climbs up. He, he becomes a partner in crime. He becomes a KO machine. And then he becomes a hold my poodle easily. Like, there's many, many games I've carried because I know how to play Superman. Whereas I've seen players play Superman and it's like, bro, you have no clue what you're doing and you're costing your team the game. So it really just depends on how good the Superman is, even though he's not as complicated as like Rick or LeBron. He requires you to understand how to play the game itself. And as you learn to play the game, he rises up in those ranks because he's very versatile. Next, we have Taz. Taz is very interesting. Taz is very straightforward. I actually really like this character. We're going to put him in the KO machine category. Um, we're going to put him in front of the Iron Giant, though, because it's easier to pull off, in my opinion, than Iron Giant in terms of KOs. Really just spin. Very good edge guard game, too. Um, you can spin to get your KOs. You can do your dog pile to get the KOs. You can dash attack to do KOs. You can eat them. Like, there's a lot of ways you can get some KOs with this character. Um, should you be good at Taz? Oh, my. He just hops into the whole My Poodle category easily. So, but we're going to keep him there. Just for the, again, tier list is for the average. Um, for the majority of the players on the, that play the game. Next up, we have Tom and Jerry. So, Tom and Jerry kind of works differently in a 1v1 scenario than a 2v2 scenario. Because a lot of the ways that Tom will win in a 1v1 is not the same he can win in a 2v2. He can't play the simple version in a 2v2. 
in the last tier list, he was very strong because you don't need to really be that good with Tom and Jerry to use him. He's very simple. As I explained in that video, Multiverses is actually a very simple game. And there's a misconception that says if a character has a whole lot of options, they're automatically a hard character. No, putting a hard character in an easy game does not make a character hard. The fundamentals of the game is still easy, which means that even a hard character is technically easy. However, in a 2v2 scenario, you're not gonna get away with just using the basics. You are gonna need to use more of his kit. With that in mind, I feel like he deserves to be in the skill-based category, and I think he deserves to be, I'm gonna say behind LeBron, because LeBron is tankier. He can he takes a little bit more damage to get knocked out, whereas Tom and Jerry are a bit lighter, so they get knocked out easier. The better you get at Tom and Jerry in 2v2s, the higher he will climb up the tiers, but just starting out picking him up, the problem is there's too much going on in a 2v2, it's too chaotic for you to really make anything happen without getting KO'd. Next we have Velma, pretty much the same as Rick, very hard character, and it's not going to be that good until you get good at Velma. Although she got a buff, she still remains in that category of she is an honest character. If you're not good at multiverses, Velma tells you you're not good at multiverses. Rick tells you you're not good at multiverses. These characters are only going to be good for players who understand how to play the game. If they don't understand how to play the game, the character is going to be very, very lackluster. So not only do you need to learn how to play Velma and Rick, but you're going to need to learn how to play multiverses exactly what I said in the last video. The buffs help, but I don't think Velma is ever gonna be that character where I can just pick up and play the character and I'm gonna stomp games. That's just not how she was designed. Last character is Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is very interesting. Um, definitely a solo character in my opinion. We're gonna put her in front of Bugs because everything that she does is very impactful and she can counter a lot of characters just for the simple fact that she can armor break, she can block projectiles, she can grant armor whenever she wants to grant armor to anybody she can dash to people she can pull people she's very versatile she's very heavy like the character has a lot going for her hitboxes are massive can hit multiple targets at the same time um there's not really much to say about that and here we are with the final lineup if you're looking for the best 1v1 characters check out my brutally honest tier list for the 1v1 characters where i go really in depth on each character if you want a best combo tier list for when ranked drops let me know in the comments below as well and i might pop out one of those when ranked does come as always i appreciate you watching the video and until next time you know what i always say that you guys are doing what popping often pull often yeah, yeah.